Let everything that has breath praise ye the Lord. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. For this is another day. For this is another year. That the Lord has blessed us to be able to see. And for that we ought to say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for being so good, so kind, and merciful. I want to thank y'all for coming today. I want to welcome our guests and friends and visitors to New Caledonia Baptist Church in Rockwall, Texas. Uh, we come to celebrate the name of Jesus. We come to build up the name of Jesus. Is anybody in here with me? This is the first of the new year. We ought to be refreshed and ready to run. Amen. For the Lord is good. And He's good all the time. Amen. Brother Rose, let's be scripture. Amen. Get the prayer and let's run with it. Amen. Good Sunday morning, everybody. Welcome to New Caledonia. This is our Sunday morning services. Yes, sir. Everybody's here and everybody's out of here. And I'm thinking to myself, is there any other place you want to be today? No. I mean, all right. I'm going to read from Psalms number 135. Praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the name of the Lord. Praise him on service of the Lord. Yet they stand in the house of the Lord and the courts of the house of God. Praise the Lord, for the Lord is good. Sing praise unto his name, for his pleasure. For the Lord has chosen Jacob to celebrate his particular treasure. For I know that the Lord is great, and that the Lord is above all gods. Especially read that Jesus say, Amen. Amen. Yes, it's a blessing to be here again. Yeah. Amen. Praise God. Yeah. Amen. I experienced some things over the week, and it's a blessing to be here. Yeah. I want to thank him this morning for touching each and one of us, waking up to a day that was a promise. I thank the Lord. He believed me on the day. Amen. Praise to God. You still got to give praise to you. So I want to do what God calls me. I want to lift you up. The praise is in that. The praise is in the Father. We thank you this morning that your will is being done in our lives as it is in heaven. We thank you for leading and guiding us by your Holy Spirit, Lord God. I thank you this morning for opening our ears and our heart that we may be able to hear you, Lord God, and follow your instructions. Because, Lord, we need you in this world that we are living in. But I thank you this morning, Father, for letting us know, Lord God, in our heart, that no weapon form against us to prosper. And God, if even if the time here has run out, Lord God, we know that you've been ready to replace, prepare a place for us, Lord God, that we will be able to rejoice and be with you, Lord God. So, Father, we thank you this morning. We ask the Holy Spirit, and we know that you have prepared our pastor with a word of our Lord God, that we may receive it. And God, like you said, man cannot live by bread alone. But every word received from the mouth of God. So, Lord, we're looking for that word this morning. Asking you, Holy Spirit, to have your word today in our lives. Thank you in Jesus Christ's holy name. Amen.
said some were suspect. But let me tell you about the suspects. They got up and praised God more than those that are unsuspect. So what do you think? They realized that there's somebody when they lay their burdens down. Oh, y'all. This is a new year. It's time for something different, y'all. I'm on my way to glory. Amen. 
I wasn't supposed to be here. But I'm here today. The scientists say I'm not supposed to be in this pool today. But I'm here today. And 
soul would come and say, what must I do to be saved? Father, we pray for our congregation, I need We pray for our middle age, that I We pray, God, for strength. We pray for constant unity in love. Because, God, we know that by the love that we have for one another, and we know that we are your disciples. God, we bind the enemy of sickness, disease, trials, and tribulations and trouble. We know that it comes, but God, we know that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. So God, we're praying over this whole congregation. We don't have to itemize, God, because you know each and every one of us, and you know our hearts, you know our needs, you know our wants and our desires.
that believe it not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out demons. They shall speak with new tongues. Tangible tongues. Understandable tongues. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They, sh they shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall Something 
that we've never done before. Because I know on a particular day, at a particular time, I'm going to leave. Or would you stay on the battlefield? Give your life for others to have what you have. Would you stay on the battlefield so that others can have the right to live just like somebody yeah. staying on the battlefield on for you? And if you want me to make it personal, you know Big Mama was on the battlefield one day. Half of y'all would over up the Big Mama, you'd been in trouble. You, you, you would have been in trouble a long time. All yeah, yeah, have witness right there. Yeah. Because they taught us, they fed us, they nurtured us, they showed us the way. Yes. And here it is today, we sit in 2024, something that none of us, a time none of us would have ever thought that we would be in. Amen. We never would have thought it, but here we are. I said to the moms the other day, here we are from the outhouse to in the house. He said, what's an outhouse? I said, that's a toilet outside the house. <laughs> See, some of y'all don't remember that. Some of y'all don't know nothing about that. The house outside the house where you had to go take care of your kids. There was snakes out there. There was walls in there. There was spiders. But it was still called an outhouse and you took care of your kids. And at night time, there was no light in there. You had to stay in the house and there was no toilet inside the house so they had what they call a porta party. Y'all don't know nothing about that. Sometimes they can call it the night party. Amen. We call it something else back then. I think it was called slop jar. That's it. It was a slop jar. All your slop went in there. And then you put a lid on top of it. Early in the morning you see them going out of there to dispose of it. God has brought us a mighty long way and then we have the audacity to act like beautiful God. But I come today to say to my brothers and sisters today that this day what the pastor going to preach about he going to preach about doing more in 24 and what is the doing more pastor that we have to do. We going to start with these people they call themselves preachers. We need to preach more. There needs to be more preaching. Like Jesus Christ, we have to follow his example as in Matthew 4 and 17. It states, repent for the kingdom of heaven has come near. We are to share this message of grace. This message of hope. This message of healing. See, people don't believe that there are still miracles taking place in this world. If you don't believe that miracles are still taking place in this world, just turn and look at your neighbor's face and tell them if you see your neighbor sitting down. And if you see your that was a miracle. Because it wasn't guaranteed that you would open your eyes today. Can you hear me right? So my brothers and sisters, this is where we are to preach. Repent for the kingdom of heaven has come near and we are to share the message of repentance and grace. And I'm reminded again because I am a step. That's what we are told having a spiritual awakening as a result of these steps. We carry this message to others that are still suffering. And they can practice these principles in all of our affairs. This is what we do, church. We practice all of these principles that come out of this book in all our affairs. No more gossiping. No more lying. No more bad right. No more hate. No more bad in the back. A whole lot of love. We got to preach. And like Paul said in 1 Corinthians 2 and 4, he said, my message and my preaching were not with wise and persuasive words, but with a demonstration of the Spirit's power. Amen. Amen. Simplicity is the way. Simplicity is the way. You don't have to be a scholar to tell somebody what the Lord did for you. Come on. You can't tell it like I can tell it. 
just like I cannot tell it like you can because I was there. I wasn't there. But like Christ, the songwriter said, he was there all the time. Oh, he was there all the time. Yes, sir. He was there. So I will drive my brothers and sisters that we are to keep it simple and share the word of God and understand that all of us have been called to share God's word. If you don't believe me, amen, let's look at Acts chapter 1 and 8. It was given power to be able to do so. After the Holy Ghost have come upon you, you shall receive power to be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and all other parts of the world. When you have given your life to Christ, you have become like Christ. The anointing is within you. You just have to use it. Stop calling Tom, Dick, and Harry and say, pray for me. Pray for yourself. Preach. It has to be preaching. It has to be kept simple. And not only should that be preaching more of it, amen, and more of the gospel, more of the word of God, not of opinion, not of thought, not of philosophy, but of the word of God. I have a spiritual advisor I talk with on a regular basis. And as him and I would talk, I would say, listen, I got to find somewhere and stand to you. Because I do not want to be like the person that is tossed to and fro by every whim of doctrine. And that's what's going on in the body of Christ. Is that we're being tossed to and fro by every whim of of God. One moment we're Hebrew Israelite, the next one we're Muslim and I am Muslim. Amen. By definition. Another man we are Buddhist and, and all along we ain't nothing Amen. because we're not connected to the source. Now, preacher, what makes you think that this is the source? I'm glad that you asked. Because he's the only one that stated and decorated and made it profound. He said, I am the one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Simple as that. That I am the way. And so once we have received salvation, we are to share that same message with others that are out there still going through what we're going through. Did you hear me? I said, share. Don't try to fix it. I can't get that over though. Don't get that. See, some of us try to fix it. You can't fix it. You didn't call it. You can't control it. Nor can you cure it. But the Lord God said, share the message. Pastor Paul put it this way. He said one plants and one more. But it's God that gives the increase. Yes, Our job is to preach it, share it, and then teach it. Number two, we have to have teaching. We are to embrace, watch this here now. We are to embrace Jesus' call to make disciples. Amen. As in Matthew 28, 19, and 20. Where Jesus said, go ye therefore and make disciples. That word may mean to create. Because God created not just us from the dust, but He created the people. Amen. He took a corrupt people out of a corrupt people. Come on. And He turned around and created out of corrupt people His people. Amen. You don't believe it? Look at your neighbor and say, Neighbor, Amen. you're looking at corrupt. Amen. But He saved me. He changed me. He rearranged me. He made me his own. And now I call him Lord of Lord, King of King, glory. Hallelujah. We're going up higher. Yeah. He says, go and make disciples of all nations. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Holy and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. And teaching them. Uh, to obey everything I have commanded you. Yes. These are the words of Christ speaking and ringing in our ear today. He 
said, now you have learned. Yeah. Go and teach somebody else. As I said, my spiritual advice, I gotta stand and not move no more. I'm too old to be taught anything else. I'm too old to want to be taught anything else. I gotta stand on what I already know is true in my life. I can only stand on what I know it has done in my life. Is that anybody here ever been on their sick bed and the doctor told me it wasn't gonna be well? But you say I have, and I stand here today to declare that the Lord still a miracle worker. I stand here to say today that no matter what he said, who is the he the doctor said, my faith and my God had the last say. Uh, they said yesterday at the service that every time he looked around, the brother was on his way out. Amen. He caught, he on his way out. Amen. But he'll call back and say, I'm still here. Yeah. To call time hasn't run out yet. So we serve God as a healer. But people don't know it if we don't teach. And we have to make sure how we are teach. The Bible says, 1 Timothy, I believe, 4 and 16, Paul says, Timothy, take heed to your teaching. For it will not only save you, but those who hear you. Well, I thank God for that word, take heed, pay attention. Some of us want to do what we want to do, we don't want to do it, how we want to do it. Don't think nobody's looking at it while we do it, but I tell you, God is looking. He's looking, and he's looking, and the Bible says, and hell has a loss. Can you hear me there? We got to teach them. And teach them as he told the disciples to teach them whatever I taught you. Yes. And what did he teach? Come here. Uh, the Beatitude, the one I like the most, he said, Blessed are the peacemakers, yes. for they shall be called the children of God. Yes. I love that one. Y'all can keep the rest, and you wonder why I always smile while chaos is around. Yes. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. Let me say that one more time, you hellions. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called. Does anybody want to be called the children of God? You do you want to be called the children of God? I can't hear you. But then stop raising sin unnecessarily. Hey, hey, hey. Not only that. Amen. Yeah. Should that be preaching? Amen. Teach. We should also be more witnessing. Yeah. Hmm. I was thinking this morning, I swear to God, didn't think I had to be preaching that in your uh, suburban. Because Mr. Rev. Allen, you still see him anyway. <laughs> 80 what? 80. I I'll be crying because I'm driving 65, can't even stay in the lane. Red Mountain and then the rain was going a little slow in the rain. Amen. I can't, I can't, I look down that road. And for those of y'all watching what I was doing behind me, I tapped him because he wasn't doing what he was supposed to do. He wasn't doing what he asked to do. But then I thought, one day, you're going to be there. Amen. And you're going to have something to say. Amen. So I'm going to give the rug in his back to talk to him today. Right. You don't just y'all gonna talk about teaching, you gotta learn to live. That's right. Yes, yes sir. You yes, gotta live. Yes. Not only before God, but before man. Yeah. Right. So Jesus said, He said, we ought to live out of Jesus' teaching in actions and compassion. After all, my brothers and sisters, Matthew 5 and 16 states, in the same way, yeah. let your life shine. Before others, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Yes, sir. Listen, listen, listen. Don't mess with me. Uh, I remember my granddaughter took a journey. And like I said to the brother this morning, people don't like my testimony, but I can't tell you. There was one day. Amen. I can only tell my yeah, man. my granddaughter 
She wasn't trying to hear nothing about Jesus and, and all of that stuff. And my baby, y'all. I just walked about and left the morning. I can show you that I can take. Come on, man. Answer. One day in my grandbaby's life, when her, her first child was born, she saw a mirror. Yeah, yeah. 31 hours yes, sir. later. Ooh, that's a long time. Yes, sir. I think that boy was about 19 pounds on her. 31 hours. Mothers know about that. It's my father. Then she turned around and had enough. After they said she couldn't have none, none in the first place. And one day she declared publicly, somebody asked her what she believed and who she believed in. She said, I believe in my papa's God. I think they call him Jesus. See, we can show him better than we can tell him by being a living testimony. I allow them to see the light in us. My spiritual advisor told me one day we were working. He said, I now believe based on what I see. And some folks say, well, that's like down Thomas. And I say, Thomas ain't down about nothing. <laughs> Thomas is just like a lot of us. You can't come tell me nothing until I see it myself. I can't say yes, and I can't say that. Yes. So how is that down because I want to see it? For myself. Is any seeing for myself up in here? Yeah, it's going to be sitting here now if you hadn't seen it for yourself. So we ought to be witnesses for Christ. We ought to be out teaching his actions and compassion. And we ought to let our light shine so that our good work can be seen and that God can be glorified. How can God be glorified by our good work? Because most people know and remember who we were better than we do. Y'all know y'all have some of those people that can tell you I remember when. And you looking at them and say, I remember when too. But what about right now? See, nobody want to deal with the right now. See, the one I remember when uh, is when they had control of you. Who had control of you? Crack cocaine had you. Alcohol had you. Sexual prosperity had you. Adultery had you. But when you came to the knowledge of Jesus, he turned it all around. How did he turn it around? Because somebody told you, I know a man from Galilee. Is there anybody in here that know a man from Galilee? We ought to be a living testimony in body uh, what Galatians 22, uh, 2 and 20 said. Paul said uh, to the Galatians, he said, I have been crucified with Christ. I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. And the problem is, some of us are still trying to live and have not died and allow Christ to live within me. You say, what are you talking about, preacher? I just don't do the things I used to do before. I don't run around trying to sell or buy Christ. I don't run around as a trunk anymore. I run around showing people the love of God. I show people what it looks like being a servant of God. Everywhere I go, I, I go in representation of God. And I go in representation of my church. Ain't God all right? So I go The one that I want to really talk about uh, as we do more in 2024. Uh, as we do more, not only just preaching and, and teaching and, and witnessing, uh, but living it. Uh, we need to do more of living the life uh, that we talk about. Uh, we got to get away from just talking about uh, he went up on a hill uh, called Calvary. Uh, and on that hill, Oh, man, he uh, put my blood uh, on the cross. 
that's having it hard, that's difficult, having a difficult time of maintaining the sobriety, maintaining the recovery, maintaining the living life like you, Christ. Yes. We want to say, we love you. Our phone number is on our page. If you need to call the preachers, you can call. We're here to offer you prayer. Offer you counsel. And whatever you need, you take care of. Father, bless them. In the name of Jesus.